Hey, what's goody fry gang? Now, I've been itching to make this video all day, but before that, I just heard Daybreaker Anthem for the first time yesterday after Splatoween, and oh my god, that song is absolutely beautiful. It sounds like credits music, like it's so, it's so amazing, but I'll save that, I'll talk about it in a video I have planned for later. But this video, I kind of just wanted to talk about the ending of Octo Expansion. And now that I think about it, kind of just all of Octo Expansion on its own. Because Octo Expansion was a really, really nice DLC. Especially the ending for it was just perfect. The Octo Expansion ending was perfect. It's like, it was like an anime. It kind of felt like we are watching an anime, alright, with the ending. But, uh... Oh, it, it's just so amazing, especially the story of Agent 8 herself. Um, cause she was just some random Octoling just walking around in Octo Valley and then she came across uh, Captain Cuttlefish and Agent 3 and then they all started fighting and then they got attacked and landed in the deep sea metro and then her journey begins. And Agent 8 just had a rough life all the way up until the end of Octo Expansion because the Octolings uh, were kind of being oppressed by the Inklings and everything since they had to live out in Octo Canyon and Octo Valley and they had to live in the domes and they were running out of power so after they lost the Great Turf War the Inklings were on top and then the Octolings were all just struggling to survive and then Agent 8 went from that to being thrown into the deep sea metro and we all know what happens down there with all the experiments and everything. So Agent 8 had such a rough uh, life prior to and during Octo Expansion and it all finally paid off in the end which makes the ending just that much more bittersweet. But yeah Agent 8 uh, which isn't even her actual name uh, she's just test subject 10,008. So that's where the Agent 8 comes from. She's not even really an agent. But um, yeah, the, everything about Octo Expansion, especially Agent 8. But yeah, she goes through all of these uh, all of these tests. She's just thrown into the deep sea metro, doesn't know what's going on, and she's forced to uh, do all these tests and collect the four things to reach the promised land. And she doesn't really have a choice, so she has to go through with it. And, you know, eventually we find out she becomes a prime candidate to uh, become part of the primordial ooze to make the ultimate life form for Commander Tartar. And then she finally ends up beating Commander Tartar and she makes it to the surface. And then she beats Commander Tartar, but she makes it to the surface and she sees Inkopolis for the first time and she's just awestruck. She's just in awe because she's been in the deep sea metro the whole time and before that, she was uh, out in Octo, Octo Canyon with all the other Octolings, so they didn't have anywhere near as luxurious of a life as the Inklings did. They are all chilling in Inkopolis, having a great time with all their turf wars, all their music, all their gear, all the freshness of Inkopolis. Like, they were living it up while the, the Octolings were just, just all of the Octarians were just living in poverty, basically just struggling to survive. So seeing Inkopolis for the first time for Agent 8 must have been just like this massive, like awe in awestruck moment. Like she just can't believe what she's seeing. Like this is the real world. Uh, this is what all the Inklings are living at. And it was great. And then after the whole Commander Tartar thing, uh, Octolings were starting to be assimilated into uh, into Inkling culture and into Inkopolis, they are finally starting to migrate over. But uh, yeah, this must have been a really tough part for Agent 8 after everything she went through and after everything she fought for. This is where she ends up at. All right, and I think Into the Light, the ending theme for uh, Octo Expansion just perfectly kind of encapsulates this as well. Not only is it just a beautiful song in and of itself, it's one of my favorite songs in the entire series. Definitely top three. All right, definitely top three. In terms of like non-battle music, like non-turf uh, or anything music you fight to, it's definitely my favorite song in the whole series. And it kind of gives off this vibe that 
even though we went through all of this pain and all of this suffering and everything we fought for, we came out victorious and came on top. Everything that we did led up to this moment and it was all worth it, finally leading us to a better life. No, it's, it's just great. I'm telling you, I could go on for hours about Octo expansion, all the uh, hidden implications and all the little details and everything and all the themes and everything. But Octo expansion was such a nice uh, addition to the series, not just in a story sense, but also gameplay. Uh, you know, the gameplay of it is great, even though the tests, I guess, all the levels, they're similar to the story mode where a bunch of different uh mini levels that we go through but it, it feels different like each level is like a challenge and with the different weapons and everything i really do like oxo expansion a lot the gameplay is kind of just like it's kind of just like a gauntlet if you think about it although side order is going to be vastly different from octo expansion in the rest of the series we're actually getting like a roguelike which is kind of unexpected and unheard of in splatoon since it's such a different genre they're just throwing it in for the side dlc like this which i i can't wait for all right i've been thinking about side order a lot recently i cannot wait for it it's endless possibilities all right endless possibilities there's you can do so many different challenge runs with it every single level is going to be different none of them will be the same ever You'll never say, play the same thing twice since it is a roguelike and um, it's being built on replayability. So I'm guessing there's some like RNG factor to it where every floor is going to be different. But we're not here to talk about side order. I've already done that and I'll probably make some videos in the future. But Octo Expansion was such a great uh, addition. And then it gave us a lot more new lore for like Dead Fish. I love Dead Fish. She's my favorite uh, artist, my in my favorite in-universe artist in Splatoon. I love her music. I just love her in general. And I'm so glad that she's in side order. Everything is tying back to side order. And I'm not even trying to. But side order is going to be a very, very big deal when it drops. And Agent 8 is already an important character in and of herself. All right, not only is she the protagonist for Octo Expansion? She's also the protagonist for Side Order. So she has some uh, like real canon lore. So Octo Expansion or Side Order is obviously gonna be like canon. I mean, Agent 8 is right there. We see the Pearl drone. We don't know how it's gonna unfold, but I'm pretty sure it is canon. But yeah, the ending for Octo Expansion after everything we find out what the things were for and the thing that'll bring us to the promised land was just a blender trying to grind captain cuttlefish and agent eight to join the primordial ooze we find out commander tartar who was at the time we knew it was a telephone we found out it's actually commander tartar and his true intentions and then we life or death have to fight off commander tartar all right if we don't defeat him like the whole history of inklings and octolings are gone like this is the most important moment of agent eight's life fighting off commander tartar because if she loses it's gone the entire world she was fighting for is just under his control and gets destroyed so imagine the relief she felt when she finally beat commander tartar all right and she's got She's got off the hook right there helping her. We got Agent 8 and Captain Cuttlefish who were previously fighting. Now they're allies to show that Commander Tartar really is this big of a threat. We're teaming up with everyone to basically save the world. And Into the Light just encapsulates that so perfectly. Like we just went through all of this, fought to save the world and we were victorious. And now we get to live a better life and everyone else gets to live a better life. It's such a great, I just love it. I love Octo Expansion, all right? The themes and everything about it is just so amazing. But yeah, I just kind of wanted to talk about it a little bit since it's just kind of been on my mind lately. But I love Octo Expansion. I find myself replaying it a lot. It's such great. It's one of my favorite DLCs ever, all right? My favorite number one is obviously Torna from Xenoblade 2. 
y'all know th this fry enthusiast channel is only my second channel my main channel is based around xeno so like xeno gears xeno saga and xeno blade uh but yeah i love xeno blade especially the dlcs future demon and torna but octo expansion is right behind it uh, but yeah octo expansion is amazing i can't wait for side order and i'm so glad that octo, octo expansion exists because it gave us my favorite artist in the whole series in dead fish and a character that a lot of people like agent eight with some badass kick-ass gameplay and music but yeah that's really it i just want to talk about octo expansion and my next couple videos i think y'all will also enjoy well yeah see you next mission and play some goddamn splatty <laughs>